Hello and welcome to today's lecture on compact microstrip antenna. In the last few lectures we have been talking about microstrip antenna, then we talked about broadband microstrip antenna. Now compact microstrip antennas are required where space is a big limitation and we know that in general let us say if we are using a rectangular microstrip antenna then its length should be lambda by 2. Now that lambda by 2 may be very large at lower frequency which we cannot fit in a let us say given size let us say for a mobile phone. If we take a frequency of say GSM 900 which is from 890 to 960 trying to fit that antenna of lambda by 2 length is going to be very difficult inside a mobile phone. So what we need to do, we need to come out with techniques which actually realize compact microstrip antenna. So welcome to today's lecture on compact microstrip antenna. So we are going to discuss about various techniques how to make the antenna compact. So let us first look at the need. So size of the microstrip antenna is large at lower frequency. For example, for RMSA, the effective length should be equal to lambda by 2. So if you take an example of 900 megahertz, which fall under the category of GSM 900, then lambda by 2 is equal to 16.6 centimeter. And if we have to design antenna at let us say 300 megahertz, then lambda by 2 is 50 centimeter. Now, of course, this is lambda by 2. Now, whereas uh, if epsilon r is high, then the size will be reduced. So, what we need to do with this, we need to do some changes so that we can make the size compact. So, the size of the microstrip antenna can be reduced by using substrate with higher epsilon r. So, suppose if we use a epsilon r of say approximately 9.8 or 10, now effective epsilon r may be let us say 9. So, square root of epsilon r will be 3. So, this dimension will be reduced by 3 times. But problem is that bandwidth and efficiency reduce and these are the things we had seen when we discuss about the basic rectangular microstrip configuration. So, now we need to discuss about some other configuration. So, one of the very popular configuration is using shorting posts at appropriate location. So, we will see that where shorting posts should be put so that we can reduce the size of the antenna. The another approach is to cut slot within the rectangular or circular or triangular patch at appropriate location so that we can increase the path length and hence reduce the size of the antenna. And the another possibility is that use combination of all the above techniques. Okay. So, let us see one by one. So, we will start with compact shorted rectangular microstrip antenna. So, here is a configuration which is a rectangular microstrip antenna and for the fundamental TM10 mode, we know that for 10 mode there will be half wavelength variation along the length and 0 means that there is a no variation along the width. Now, for this particular mode, if you look at the field distributions, it is going to plus then it goes to 0, then it goes to minus. Now, along this central axis, field is equal to 0. Now, voltage 0 really means that this is nothing but a short circuit. We can actually replace this entire configuration to this simple configuration here, where the total length L equal to lambda by 2 is now reduced to L equal to approximately lambda by 4, where all these things are shorted. So, how do we achieve shorting? So, in a microstrip antenna achieving shorting is very, very simple. So, all we do it is either we can use a PTH technology which is a plated through hole. So, we have a multiple plated through hole here along this axis and that will be uh, connected to the ground plane or PTH facility is not there then drill hole and put the wire solder at the bottom side as well as on the top side or instead of putting multiple hole, one can also put a full shorting plate over here. A metallic plate can be put from here to the ground and soldered all around. And now, here is the feed point location. So, how will be the voltage distribution? Well, now the voltage distribution will be 0 along this axis and it will go from 0 to if I say plus, it will be double plus, 0 plus double plus and this will be uniform along the 
width. So now let us see what are the different possibilities we have. So now the possibilities what we have either one can do it as a we short the entire width. If we short the entire width then this length will be equal to lambda by 4. However, we can do partial shorting of the width also. So instead of connecting the full width doing a plated through hole, we can just have a smaller number of plated through hole uh, let us say near the center. Then what happens now? Now the field is 0 here which will go to plus then it will go to double plus. Similarly, along this field is 0, it will go to plus, it will go to double plus and field will be uniform over here. So now for this particular case, since the field is starting from here to 0 to going this to double plus, that means this length will be approximately equal to lambda by 4. And if this length is equal to lambda by 4, we can find out the frequency. So this is C. So, C is nothing but 3 into 10 to the power 10 centimeter in per second. So, that has been converted to gigahertz and here we have written L e and W e are the effective length and width in centimeter. So, this configuration is nothing but corresponding to lambda by 4. So, 4 is coming here and what is that total length now? L e will be the effective length corresponding to this and plus W e minus W s that is coming. So, this total W minus this W s and divided by 2 because we are taking only this portion. So, that length has to be added to this length L e and the rest is same as before where it will be square root of epsilon e. So, one can actually see that effectively now for the same frequency length will be less if this particular portion is higher. And if W s is equal to W e, then L e will be the maximum value and if W s is reduced, then L e will have a lower value. So, let us just see what we have. So, here I have shown a particular case here, their length is equal to W equal to 3.3 centimeters. So, we have just taken a square pad and epsilon r is 2.33 h 0.159 tan delta and we have actually kept fixed x equal to 0.4 and we have not tried to optimize for different values of this ratio here. This is just to give you an idea what really happens if the feed point is fixed. So, what we have done here, we have given a several cases here shorting ratio which is w s by w. So, that varies from 0 0.1 all the way to 1. 1 would mean entire width is shorted and 0 0.1 would mean very small portion of the width is shorted. So now let us see if we short the entire width then this corresponds to L equal to approximately lambda by 4. So that gives me a resonance frequency of 1.447. So now if we use lesser number of shorting one can see that the frequency is reducing. Okay. Now, these are the experimental results and these are the theoretical results which we have found by using the previous equation which is over here. So, we know over here what is W, then from W we can find W effective, we know what is W s. So, putting these values, since these values are fixed here, F is going to change. So, we can see over here frequency is changing. And if you look at the experimental frequency over here and if you look at the theoretical, they are fairly close to each other. In fact, we have calculated percentage error in F0. So, if you see except for this case here, for all the other case percentage error is actually less than 1 percent. So, that means this formula is really good and can be used to design an antenna. So, now let us just see what happens to the impedance. So, x is equal to 0.4. For this value of x equal to 0.4, we can see that for fully shorted width, we can get approximately matching with the 50 ohm, 52, 53, even 59 are reasonably good as far as the matching is concerned. But then we can see that the impedance is increasing very significantly. Now, this does not mean that we cannot do impedance matching. 
for these particular cases here. All we need to do it is since impedance is higher, what we need to do? We need to shift x towards the shorted point because along the shorted edge impedance is 0. So, instead of 0.4, suppose we take 0.3, then these things will be matched. If we take that as 0.2, then these things will get matched and if we take close to 0.1, then we can obtain matching for these cases here. So, just by changing the feed point location, we can obtain matching for any of these shorting ratio. So, one can see that this is the case here, which gives rise to the lowest frequency or for a desired frequency, you can say this will give rise to the lowest length. So, then what we have done here, since we know that W s is small will give us the compact size. So, here we have used single shorting post. So, a single shorting post has been used at the center. So, then what will happen now? Now, this length will be equal to lambda by 4. How will the field vary? It will be 0 here plus here double plus here. This will be 0 plus double plus. So, basically now if you think from the radiation point of view, see earlier just recall for a rectangular patch, we had a one slot here which was radiating and there was a another slot over here which was radiating assuming if this was the full length. So, there were two slots which were radiating and we could find the total radiation pattern for a RMSA without any shorting that will give rise to a slot radiation pattern multiplied by the array factor. So, now there is a only one slot which is effectively radiating and I just want to mention here also. So, this is double plus. So, field will be going outside. Okay. Now, here the field is going out, but this is also going out. So, along these edges will cancel each other. Now, over here now this is going from 0 to plus, this is also going to 0 to plus. Plus would mean it is radiating in this particular direction, whereas this is also radiating in this. So, since this field is relatively small compared to the field over here, so what we will see that this actually will result in cancelling the field due to this particular component here and that is why single shorting posts generally have a poor efficiency. But we will tell you some techniques where we can improve the efficiency, but first let us just find out how we can calculate the resonance frequency. So, in this case we know that this is the length which is equal to lambda by 4. So, then F 0 will be 30 by 4, again 30 corresponds to C which is 3 into 10 to the power 10 centimeter per second, 10 to the power 9 term has been removed, put here in gigahertz and L E and W E will be in centimeter. So, now let us see what will be the lambda by 4 length. So, lambda by 4 length will be this length here and along with that fringing field. So, we take L effective from here and this will be nothing but half of W effective. So, that is a half of W effective. So, this will be now the total length which should be really nothing but lambda by 4. Square root epsilon E comes as before and again epsilon E has to be calculated corresponding to this particular width here. So, there is another way to do it also instead of putting a shorting post over here, suppose we put a shorting post over here. So, now how the field variation takes place? It is actually now 0 here plus here and double plus here. It is 0 here plus here double plus here. So, now effectively the length is actually this length is equal to lambda by 4. So, if this length is equal to lambda by 4, so now this expression will get modified. So, now the length will be L effective plus W effective. So, you can see that this will be the expression. So, suppose now you want to design an antenna for a given frequency. So, frequency is known. Sometimes it is easier that you take L equal to W here or here depending upon whether you want to use this configuration or this one. So, let us say suppose we want to use this one. So, you take L equal to W. So, this whole thing will be 3 by 2 
multiplied by le f0 is known epsilon e will be known for a given substrate so we can calculate what should be the length and that will complete the design now based on this concept only there is another concept which is known as pfa pfa is nothing but it stands for planar inverted f antenna in fact this whole concept came from that it actually came from the concept that if we have let's say a monopole antenna so this is the monopole antenna now monopole antenna will have larger length so people came out with the normal mode helical antenna which has a normally small height then the another option is that instead of using a monopole antenna of this height we use a monopole antenna which is bent like this here okay so the height is reduced but if we feed at this particular point here then what actually has been seen that the input impedance is not very good it is very low so in order to get an impedance matching so what is normally done so this is shorted with the ground plane which is down below so from the ground plane it goes up and then this total length is approximately equal to lambda by 4 so now since this point is shorted so impedance will be very small and this is an open circuit impedance will be very high so somewhere from here to here we can find out a 50 ohm impedance and that is what had been done so you put a feed point like this so this whole configuration looks like not i won't say it is a inverted f antenna it is like f antenna rotated by 90 degree but the terminology which has been used is inverted f antenna so now this is a normal monopole antenna but inverted f configuration for impedance matching now instead of inverted f monopole if we make this whole thing as planar so if this is planar and then we are still feeding it like this here so that is why it is known as planar inverted f antenna so now let's just go back see the configuration here so really speaking if this width is reduced significantly this whole configuration will look like a planar inverted f antenna but if we increase the width here in fact what happens if we increase the width there will be more fringing fields here and that will also give rise to a little better bandwidth also so we can use either this configuration or this particular configuration to realize broader bandwidth but now i mentioned to you about the efficiency so to improve the efficiency the concept of pfa is that we actually do not use a dielectric substrate we just use air so for air epsilon e will be equal to 1 so just think about there is a metallic plate which is hanging in the air so one support is provided by this shorting post with respect to the ground and another support is provided by this feed point if some additional support is required one can put some supporting things over here maybe by using foam or very low dielectric material screw or otherwise if we still use some dielectric then we need to do simulation of that but we can put a small these two screws over here and do the simulation so that we can note down the effect but in general just to tell you if you put a dielectric screw here and here to support the antenna then resonance frequency will slightly reduce because now effective dielectric constant because of these dielectric screw will increase so it is better to use screw with very low dielectric constant or support can be provided just underneath this one can use foam substrate which can provide the support now foam has a dielectric constant of the order of 1.05 which will not make too much of a difference but even that can be simulated and optimized so this is a very popular configuration so of course now there is a only one effective slot which is radiating so gain of this antenna will be much lesser than the gain of the rectangular microstrip antenna but one should look in from different point of view smaller gain also means it will have a very wide beam so in fact let's say for a mobile phone we do want an antenna which has a very wide coverage okay so we don't want a narrow beam which will have a high gain so since lower gain also imply wider beam so it will have a coverage so suppose if you want to use a 
mobile phone like this. So, what you can really do it is that this will be shorted, but we want a mobile phone to have a much wider coverage. So, shorting configurations have been used in the applications where compact antennas are required and where wider beam coverage is required, so that we can have a coverage all around, but of course, gain is relatively less and by using air and suspended metal, what we actually achieve efficiency is very good. So, now let us just look at the alternate configuration also. So, here is a configuration instead of using a rectangle, we can actually use a circular microstrip antenna. So, here is a circular microstrip antenna. So, for a circular microstrip antenna, we generally feed somewhere over here and for the fundamental TM11 mode. So, we know for fundamental TM11 mode, how is the field variation? It will be plus here, 0 here, minus here. You can see that this is the field distribution and also field distribution will be plus here, 0 here, minus here, 0 here, plus then. Okay, so, that means along this particular axis field is nothing but equal to 0 and if the field is 0 over here, then we can replace this configuration by half of this configuration. That means, this is a shorted semicircle and along this then we can put the shorting post. So, that means now size is reduced precisely by half and here also one can do one another thing that instead of shorting the entire edge, one can only use single shorting post or one can have a smaller w s like this much here or increase that. So, one can realize a compact circular or semicircular microstrip antenna which is shorted either fully shorted or partially shorted. The alternate way to do it is also is that we can use a semicircular microstrip antenna. We had seen that for semicircular microstrip antenna, the size is actually half of the circular microstrip antenna. Now, for this particular case again, we can put a feed point here. Again for the fundamental mode, what will happen? So, this will be plus, it will be 0, it will go to minus and along the circumference also it will be plus 0 minus. So, that means along this axis field will be 0. And if the field is 0 along this axis, we can replace this configuration by this one over here, where now this is one half of this one here, where we are putting all these shorting posts along this here. So, this would have a one fourth of the size of this particular circular microstrip antenna. And again here, instead of using number of shots here, we can actually even use a single shot over here. And by using single shot here, we can make the configuration even more compact. So, let us just look at the comparison of various uh, circular microstrip antenna configurations. So, over here we can just see the case taken is A as 3 centimeter, epsilon r, h are given and tan delta is given over here. So, let us say circular microstrip antenna, semicircular microstrip antenna then shorted semicircular microstrip antenna, shorted 90 degree sector microstrip antenna. Now, in this particular case, we optimize the feed point for each of these cases, but first let us just see the area wise. So, circular microstrip antenna, we know what is A, so we can calculate what is the area which is given by pi A square. And for these two, the area is half of this here and for this configuration, area is one fourth of that. So, now let us see for all these cases, we had to optimize the feed point. So, one can see that for circular microstrip antenna, it was at 0.9 and for shorted, it is almost at 0.3. Now, the resonance frequency for all these four configuration, you can say that there is a very small variation in the frequency and yet the area is reduced by 25 percent. One can see that the bandwidth in megahertz has reduced and one can see also percentage bandwidth is reduced. But if you really try to look at over here, this is 0 0.8 and this is 1.3. So, if you see that area reduction is 4 times, however, bandwidth reduction is not even 50 percent. 
if you see this configuration and this area is reduced by half, however, bandwidth reduction is very, very small. So, these are the nice compact microstrip antenna configuration, which can actually give rise to the better bandwidth. Similarly, instead of using a circular microstrip antenna and variation, we can actually use the triangular microstrip antenna variation also. Again, one has to see what is the field distribution of the triangular microstrip antenna. So, we will actually look into this particular configuration in the next lecture. So, but just to tell you and then we will continue from here for a triangular microstrip antenna again what we need to do it is we should know where the field is going to be 0 and wherever field goes to 0 that means voltage is 0 here we can replace that portion by a shorting strip or shorting pose. So, by using this configuration we can actually realize a compact microstrip antenna. So, today we have looked into various techniques of using shorting post to reduce the size, but in the next lecture we will continue with the triangular microstrip antenna and we will see how we can put shorting posts at different places, so that we can get a more compact configuration, but we will also look at other possibility which is by cutting slot and then we will use combination of short and slot to realize even more compact microstrip antenna. So, with that bye for now and we will see you in the next lecture, bye.